Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? If you want my opinion, a, a servant must have burnt some old papers. That's all. Why, of course. You very nearly made me think that you were trying to hide something, Louis. No, I'm sure there must be other hidden messages. He won't let go. He's going to work his way back to the Bible if he continues. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Oh, the Bible's still there. Right. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. locked. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Weaknesses of the Human Psyche by Gilhem Trimor. Gilhem Trimor. Trimor. An anagram of Mortimer. Wow. Arrogant enough to publish writings on mental control. Full view of everyone. I wonder who he's writing for. 
A Van Lovenhoek microscope? The most sophisticated microscope there is. When I think of the difficulty the order had in getting hold of one of these, There. Those are the nails I was looking for. I noticed they were old and rusty, but... But I hadn't noticed these traces of... Could that be blood? It, is it really the relic of the Holy Cross? I can hardly believe it. And a tarot cards. The Emperor, a symbol of power and stability. Temperance, which expresses a reward. And the Chariot, now that evokes triumph. If this hand is anything to go by, Mortimer's destiny promises to be glorious. Feathers, pigeons probably. I'd say it's onyx or obsidian. I don't know what's written. I don't recognize the engraved symbols at all. What on earth is that? Mortimer have locked in there. Alright, come on, let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly. A painting. It looks unfinished. A piece by Lord Mortimer, I presume. Hmm. A rather avant-garde technique. The Titan against men. <laughs> How ironic.
What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Are you joking or what? You sell me pipe dreams about Mortimer's project, and a few hours later, one of your allies completely breaks down. Is this what Mortimer's side is all about? What am I going to do now? Come now, my Lord Duke. You know very well that at this level, things can get pretty rough. You ought to be used to it. Rest assured, Lord Mortimer has bounced back before. It's not an issue. What can I do for you? I'm dreaming. My mother was right. He's not going to tell me one word about what happened to Emily. To tell you the truth, I'm in search of an armillary sphere. You wouldn't know where I can find it, would you? Well, well. So you do have a passion for astronomy. Von Volner has already bored me quite enough with all of his endless stories. You ought to concentrate, Louis. Politics is an art that requires all one's attention. Refrain from spreading yourself too thin and leave stargazing to the poets. <laughs> what can I say? I am only- Ask Volner. I am sure he must have it among his effects. Perfect. Thank you, my Lord Duke. Leave me now. See you later. Armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door.
What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter 2, and one in verse 6. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. These towns have one thing in common. They're all related to the life and death of Jesus. For example, Jordan is the place of the baptism of Christ. There, there are three styles of writing and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. You could see that the paint has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but I can distinguish the letters N, R, I. Nothing more. Why, of course. I-N-R-I, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Yadorum. These initials stand for Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This is the inscription which appears on the cross at the crucifixion of Jesus. Why, of course, they're part of the initials I-N-R-I that you can find on the cross of Jesus at his crucifixion. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. If Mortimer deliberately set a trap by showing the birth of Christ, then maybe the solution is the contrary. 
the death of Christ in that case? This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. Chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus was baptized by John and Jordan on the 9th of Hezvan, 3,852. Chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. Chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. Chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus rose from the dead on the 14th of Nisan, 3,793, in Nazareth. He appeared with a halo above his head. Chapter 24, verse 3. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men enclosed that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee.
Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. Those are Roman numerals on the disc. Cross is stuck in the mechanism. I can't do anything. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus was baptized by John and Jordan on the 9th of Hezvan, 3,852. Chapter 5, verse 2. Jesus cures the sick and lame on the 8th of Adar, 3,791, in Jerusalem, at the Pool of Bethesda. All stand and fling away their canes. Chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus rose from the dead on the 14th of Nisan, 3,793, in Nazareth. He appeared with a halo above his head. Chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus rose from the dead on the 14th of Nisan, 3793, in Nazareth. He appeared with a halo above his head.
it works. I hadn't seen those other wheels. But I don't know, I find this theme too close to the one that I used. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. Look at this. There are notches between each of the wheels. So, I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally, the date to the moon. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. There are different icons on this wheel, but it looks like some of them can't be connected to the other wheels. I think I can make out each one of the icons apart from the one covered in blood. Going clockwise from the one I just mentioned, we have the halo that represents the resurrection. The waves represent the baptism of Jesus. It's more difficult to identify the next one. Maybe a crib and in that case it's surely linked to the birth of Christ. The red herring that my mother followed. Then. The symbol represents the crown of thorns that Jesus wore during his crucifixion. The dove also represents the baptism, certainly another red herring. Then comes the symbol of the Trinity. And finally, the candle that must stand for the Last Supper. Now, given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. The totally black moon corresponds to the new moon. So, going clockwise, we have the waning crescent, the last quarter, the waning gibbous, the full moon, the waxing gibbous, the first quarter, and lastly, the waxing crescent. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east.
what combination corresponds to the chosen theme. According to the architect's notes in the armillary sphere, the moon during the resurrection was a waxing gibbous. That's the one on which the shadow on the right is just a small crescent. To follow the resurrection theme, I should select the halo. By following the clues in the bibles and the architect's notes, the resurrection took place on the 14th of Nisan, 3793, according to the astronomers of that time. That would correspond to April 1st in the year 33 on a modern calendar. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. Ah! Louis! Ah! 